Hello students. Um, in this uh, short series of videos, what we're going to do is just review the area of two-dimensional shapes. So this isn't going to be uh, a full treatment of area. It's going to basically assume that you've already done area and you just need a quick revision. In this case, I'm doing it because my students are starting volume shortly and they need to know how to find area in order to find volume. So it, it'll be fairly quick. Okay, very quickly, let's have a look at the formula, uh, find the formula for the area of a rectangle. So area is just the space inside of a two-dimensional shape. So one way to find the area, which we denote by capital A, would be to just count the squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we could just count the squares. Let's assume each of those is one square centimeter and we get the area that way. And most of you would realize, of course, there's a faster way to do that, which is to say because there's six squares along there, the length of this rectangle is six. Because there's four rows of squares, the width of the rectangle is four and we could just do it by multiplying 6 times 4. And that, of course, gives us the same answer. And in general, I think you can probably see or you have been taught that the general formula for the area of a rectangle is length multiplied by width. Okay, So that's the formula for the area of any rectangle. Let's have a look at some other shapes on the next page. Well, it turns out, this is from a textbook that we're using. It turns out that there is area of a square is side times side. Rectangle we just did, length times width. Parallelogram, it's base multiplied by perpendicular height. While I'm doing that, let's have a quick look at the triangle. Let's well, base times perpendicular height as well. But because a triangle is just half of a parallelogram, it's base times perpendicular height divide 2. The trapezium, also known as a trapezoid in some parts of the world, it's a bit different. Okay, I can't use that. It's sort of like base times height, but I can't use that base because it's too short. I can't use that base, <clears throat> excuse me, because it's too long. But if I average the two by adding them together and dividing by 2, so the average base times height gives me the area. And we label these parallel sides as A and B. And then finally, the uh, kite or the rhombus. Um, if the total width of the, the kite and the rhombus is X, the height is Y. The formula given in our textbook is area equals X times Y divide 2. Now, the problem with all of this is um, it's really all just the same formula. Here they call that length S, here they call it L, here they call it um, B for base, here they call it X. So when I teach area to my students, I say we don't need all of those formulas. All we need is that one, which is length times width. And then sometimes, like for example, in the case of a triangle, we then have to modify it because it's only half of a parallelogram. We have to go one half times length times width. So my preference, whoops, my preference is to have for square length times width, rectangle length times width, parallelogram length times width, triangle length times width, but then divided by two. Trapezium, um, it's really the average of the lengths times the width. So I like to just say for area of a trapezium, average length times width, and for rhombus, length times width divide 2. So you could, in fact, get away with one formula rather than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 formulas. Having said that, um, our students use a formula sheet, and these formulas are on the formula sheet. So when I do my uh, examples, I'll probably use these formulas, because if you have a formula sheet, it doesn't matter if there's six of them rather than one. OK, there's a couple of other formulas that you need to know as well. OK, the first one is area of a circle. And uh, the formula that I like to use for that one is area equals pi times radius times radius. I actually write out all of the words. Um, the more standard way of writing it 
instead of writing radius, we write the letter R and radius times radius or R times R is R squared. So that's the standard formula. The only trouble with this is um, I've had many, many students in the past when they see the R and the two, they think, oh, that's radius, sorry, that's pi times radius times two which is why I like to write out radius times radius. But again, that's the formula in the textbook. And uh, if the kids type that in into their calculators using their power button, it doesn't seem to, uh, it seems to solve those problems. And the last one, which uh, might be new to some of the students is area of a sector. It's pretty much the formula for the area of a circle, pi times radius times radius, but we don't have a whole circle. We only have a part of a circle. And the part that we have is whatever that angle is in there divided by 360. Since it's 360 degrees in a whole circle, this just tells us what fraction of a whole circle we have. So my suggestion is use area equals length times width with a modifier if necessary, plus the formula for the area of a circle and area of a sector, or you can use the individual formulas uh, in general, I think do whatever your textbook does is probably the smartest way to go. Okay, in the next video, we'll go ahead and talk about rounding and just do a couple of simple uh, area questions to show you the setting up.